What's going on, everybody? And welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color have made to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shan Tynes. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And Chris Abacon. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? Daniel Acevedo. How's it going, guys? Yeah, we've got a full team. So uh, please continue to tune in throughout the week. So Monday, Tuesday, our topics, Wednesday, discussion, Thursdays, ask a CISSP, and then Fridays, everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. Um, help us to get to 500 subs by the end of the, of the month, hopefully, and then 1,000 by the end of the year. Uh, without out of the way, uh, yeah, just please like, share, subscribe. Without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this article comes from uh, Dark Reading, written by the Dark Reading staff, which every, I think all the ones we've had from Dark Reading, it just says Dark Reading staff is who, who, who wrote the article, right? Which is a good thing. It's a team effort, right? But the title of this one uh, is Feds Uncover Sprawling Gen AI-Enabled Russian Troll Farm, right? So this is not anything new when it comes to Russia and how they go about doing business, right? Uh, but except the the way they're going about doing it now is with AI enhanced software, right? So we've already we've already gone into this before about, you know, Russia spreading disinformation and putting bots out there on social media sites. Well, it's getting a lot easier for them to do, right? And this is this is where I think the discussion comes in, right? So like we talk about the benefits of AI, right? Like what is it what is it good for? What let's look at the good uses for it. And we've always talked about there's the other side of the coin and here's where it is, right? Um and, and and I feel a little bit differently when it comes to disinformation, right? Because disinformation, I realize it is a thing, but it's all in what you choose to take from it, right? Um, people talk about, oh, well, if someone's putting disinformation out there, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, isn't it your, your responsibility to go about and make sure that what you're reading is actually correct or it, it's properly, you know, I don't want to say vetted, but it, it's actually real information, right? Like people just take it as if someone puts disinformation out there, Russia, China, North Korea, whomever. Um, that oh that's that's bad in itself and that's that's who we should be going after like no how do we better educate people to to find better sources you know what i mean like if you only if you're only relying on social media for your news right like that could that could be a problem i'm not saying it's totally bad right but like if you're just relying on your social media friends or whomever to be like hey i saw this and this is what it is and you just take that as the gospel this is where the problems come in right but neither here nor there right so russia is using ai to its advantage right so um, U.S. agencies, right, including the FBI and the Cyber National, Cyber National Mission Force, which I had never even heard of until this. Uh, like, if, if we had covered that before, I don't remember it, but Cyber National Mission Force, CNMF, um, alongside agencies in Canada, the Netherlands, and the Netherlands, right? So, international again, right? We're getting better at doing this when it comes to doing these joint, uh, these joint type of, uh, like, missions and things like that. Um, they released a joint advisory, and, and, and this advisory is 14 pages long, a lot of stuff. Um, in there, but they go into a lot of detail about how uh, Russia's uh, they have this gen, gen AI enhanced software that that created a bot farm, right? And so it's just out there putting all this information out there for people to you know take with it what they will. Because again, right, you should do your homework, right? Verify with different sources. I know for me personally, whenever I see something, I try to find different sources for it, right? Like you always have a lean, you know, that's far each way right and then you try to find something in the middle like i try to do that myself to try to try to see where the where the where the truth lies but um it, it's just making it so much easier right so now the russians i mean <laughs> it's not like they're like not like they're not losing people in battle over there in ukraine right so they could they could do with the, the ai helping them out uh with using less people you know <laughs> and and using the software to put to put the disinformation out there but again this is the flip side of the coin right for all the good that that AI can do, this is what you get from it is, is the bad side here where this type of information gets out there. So, uh, yeah, Russia's out there. They're not stopping anytime soon, right? Like, it's only a matter of time before you see the same thing happening with China and North Korea, you know what I'm saying? But, Daniel, what's your thoughts on this? No, yeah, you, you hit a lot of good points on this. But uh, I think, as you alluded to, I think the big thing that comes out of this is the capability that AI gives this type of attack or, you know, that that is focused on social engineering in, in itself, right? Uh, the names keep coming this week. The The software you use is called the Meliorator software. It sounds like a name out of uh, House of Dragons right there, Sir Meliorator. I can't even pronounce it correctly, but <laughs> yeah. I think the, the real meat and potatoes of this, though, is 
it's an AI enhanced software package that gives the user the ability to create, you know, realistic online personas in mass. So they're able to use this software to, and then if you read the advisory, it's kind of crazy. It goes into souls and then the thoughts tab. So you have essentially an administrator GUI and the souls are the bots and they're determined based on selection of specific parameters or archetypes selected by whoever's running the software, right? And then the thought tabs are contains automated scenarios or actions which can be completed on behalf of the souls. So instead of one person having to code and create uh, scripts or something like that to then create different personas through this software, there's a clean GUI, and then you can just pop out hundreds and hundreds of real like persons to then do these scenarios, whatever you want it to be for misinformation. Um, I kind of agree with you, Shannon. Like I, I try to like in my own personal life, and I think in this day and age, 2024, you kind of have to vet your sources to kind of figure out what information is actually being fed to you for whatever you're trying to look for. But I think when you have things like this, though, I think the the amount of information that gets delivered to the masses right now it's it's almost like overwhelming in a sense. So I could see how, from a general user's perspective, it could be tiresome to have to kind of like weed through everything, especially if you start seeing things pop up multiple places, especially driven from these kind of bot farms with a narrative. It's hard to kind of be like, oh, maybe this is right. I'm seeing it in X. I'm seeing it on you know Facebook or Instagram or all these other places. And the same type of uh, narrative is being driven out. Obviously, it's being driven out because you know the tool is doing that that you start thinking that it must be true, but <clears throat> who, who's to say, you know, how to combat that in everybody's day-to-day's life without proper tools yourself to kind of weed through these kind of things that are being thrown at you. Um, but those are kind of my thoughts, Chris. What do you think? Yeah, so really what stood out to me was, like you were saying, the souls and thoughts tab. So to me, they they are really pre-planned, pre-planned responses, pre-planned people right souls as in hey let's uh, what kind of person would be talking about this specific political topic or hey what what kind of adversarial left like i want i want a left wing troll and a right wing troll and somebody a troll from this this country or that country right so the fact that they've gone through the the notions and utilizing gen ai to one from they probably gathered information from the internet open source from every troll out there right into the thoughts tab i think it's honestly very 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 elaborate and very dangerous right which really highlights the importance of getting information from multiple sources and you know right before i read this article on reddit right some somebody had shared something uh from last year right it was just some innocent type clip right but i noticed uh, there was one comment that was highly upvoted the first comment up there was Hey, this is the same highly upvoted comment from the last year's post. Go away, troll! Right? So there's people within forums kind of regulating. Hey, I know this is a, tro- a troll from X, whatever. Right? So it's just really interesting to see people are calling out trolls on these forums. Luckily, like I mean, not luckily, but ironically, not on Facebook, right? Where I feel like there's the most troll action. And on X, people don't do that, but on Reddit, it was really interesting that people do get called out. Um, really, also, it depends, you know, I, I, I would imagine that these social media companies are uh, implementing some type of troll detection, you know, utilizing Gen AI or utilizing some type of AI capability, right? I, I would imagine that would be a thing. Really, it's going to, you know, get to the point where um, social media is going to have to have some type of ver- identification and verification, kind of like on LinkedIn where you can see, hey, this is an actual person. We verified them through a government ID. But that makes it hard to troll, right? Because, hey, your actual personality or your actual you know, persona is tied to it, right? Um, which is really kind of going off topic, the difference between LinkedIn and you know, Facebook, right? You got LinkedIn, everybody's happy-go-lucky, generally positive, and Facebook, you got the trolls. But anyway, beside the point, I had another uh, thought as well, as, as Shannon was talking about different data sources. <laughs> or different sources of news, this specific article, it's called Russia Today, right? Russia Today's a Meliodor software package. But Russia Today, if you guys don't know, is a Russian TV channel, right? So 
it's also a, a point of, of propaganda for for that for that country. But also importantly, one way you can also diversify your you know world news perspective is you can follow different news organizations from different countries, right? So you can follow like, DW from Germany. You can follow Al Jazeera English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can follow BBC. Um, you can follow. There, there's uh, some Indian outlets, some Asian outlets, right? And you'll you'll really find how different they report the same thing, right? From their specific biases. Again, we a lot of us don't have time for that, but it's really interesting if when you do that. Like, hey, look, India is totally reporting this totally differently than the way uh, the UK is, right? And given their history, I, I, I get it, right? But it's also very important to diversify your news sources as well, not just left and right from the United States, but hey, you can go, you can go by country in different state outlets from that standpoint as well so yeah shannon did yeah. you have something so so yeah i it's been my, it's it's been my experience though when you go to the foreign ones um it is more just reporting the news like you see more of the slants in the u.s media like okay oh, i see that's left slanting i see that's right slanting very few moderates and in, in the middles right um but like when you go to the bbc and the bbc every once in a while will put one out there you're just like oh yeah i see the slant in that one but for the most part it is just reporting the facts has been my experience right um and again i i get it right like when it comes to india right like they they up until the 40s right they were under it was the 40s they were under british oppression I, i'm trying to remember what it was for india but it was something like that right like it was fairly recent history right so um i get it like if they're reporting something about the uk they may have a little bit of a of a tent right like it's only exactly, been like 80, yeah. it's only been 80 years right they're not quite over it you know what i'm saying so um i get that but no it, it's been my experience that the foreign media has, has been a little better about just reporting facts you know what i mean that's harder to find here in the u.s but yeah that, that those are my thoughts what do you think ryan no i think you you hit the nail on the head um so um Thing number one, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much. Thing number two. Uh, so RT got me when I was in Germany. So when, when I was um, living in, um, where was I at in Germany? Uh, Stutt Stuttgart. Stuttgart. So when I lived, yeah, when I lived in Stuttgart, I used to watch RT all the time. And I was like, man, that's a really good news source. Like they had articles on, um, they had opinion pieces on uh, blacks in the South, uh, black fathers, uh, black women starting businesses and things of that nature. I was like, man, this is a really good, it was all American uh, newscasters and all that other good stuff. But every now and then they would have like a wild article to me anyway um, about how uh, uh, U.S. is uh, uh, agitating China for no reason and how the Russia is trying to do something to uh, aid I forget what Middle Eastern country in the U.S. Uh, trying to aid, to, Cry to aid Crimea, right? In the Ukraine. That's what they tell you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was like, what is going on here? And then I found out that our, the R stand for Russia. And I was like, ah, they got me. Got him. <laughs> but that's, that's what you do, right? You take you take somebody who's who's uh, typically sees the media as disenfranchised, right? You normally don't see positive articles uh, and you're trying to pull me in, which they did. And then you try to feed them, drip feed them, you know, your bias which was heavily uh, Russia and China because, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, buddy, buddy. And yeah, it, it really worked. I, I was really uh, into the propaganda for a little bit until I figured out what the R stood for. And I was like, man, you got me. That was pretty good. <laughs> That's good psyops right there. But yeah, I, I kind of agree with Chris. Like, I think they're going to do some kind of verification in the future because uh, people are going to say, oh, it's against my, my, uh, my freedom of speech and, and, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, those social media platforms not built around your freedom of speech. They're built around selling your data, right? And if you're uh, disruptive, then they can boot you off because it's not your platform. It's their platform. Uh, so your freedom of speech rights do not extend through somebody's private business. Uh, and I think that's what's eventually going to happen is you're going to have to do like a, a, a ID and me, a, a verify through government ID and things of that nature to combat this because it's only going to get worse. You can see sometimes when when there's a false information on X, it'll actually tell you like this is misinformation or or this is how this this snippet was actually taken from uh, you know from this place or that place, but it's few and far between. You see it on Facebook every now and then uh, as well, where they'll try to try to shed light on the disinformation, but it's not good enough. Before like you have to find somebody who can vet it and then do something with it, and it's not. It's not necessarily an automated process, at least that's my understanding. Uh, but what could be an automated process is to actually verify it's a human being. And then they can still spread disinformation, but at least you know it's not tens of thousands of fake people spreading this information. Um, and then number, thing number three, 
I'm kind of proud of this. We've had so many episodes that we're starting to forget stuff that we talked about. So uh, A is showing our age, but B is. <laughs> so it was called Who is Cybercom's Elite Cyber National Mission Force? Brian and Shannon discuss how the U.S. Cyber Command deployed cyber 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 specialists <laughs> to more than a dozen countries last year. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I do not remember. I was like, and I, and I put that in there. I was like, maybe we did discuss, discuss it and I just don't remember, but it did not look familiar to me when I was reading it. So, yeah. yeah. Now, now, I'm not trying to call you. I'm just trying to say that's how much, how many episodes. <laughs> See, you know what that means to me? That Cybercom needs to do a better yeah. job of branding. Right. Hey, mm. I don't remember this. This is too generic. I thought it was. I thought it was a Canadian organization for for. There you go. Pizza. You know where they could do that? They could do that right through this podcast. Exactly. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> and I will send you my media package, my media kit. Yeah. So, so Chris, I want to I want to hit on something that you were saying though. So, um, when you were talking about getting rid of the bots and whatnot, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember this, but remember when Elon tried to back out of the the sale for Twitter at the time. Right. And it was X. That was one of the things he brought up was like, hey, you're telling me we have this many accounts on there, but I know there are bots like he was trying to get the price brought down because remember, he was like, I'll buy it for this much or whatever. They called his bluff and he was like, whoa, maybe not that much. Like you don't even, you don't really have as many uh, real people on your platform as you say you do. And that was one of the things he was trying to combat was all, all the bots. You know what I mean? So like, it's not like this is anything new to where we don't know this type of stuff is out there. Elon was, was going after this two years ago, whenever it was that, that he right. was kind of, he, he, probably, he, was. he probably wants the bots now. He's like, please come back. Yeah. Please yeah. make more accounts on here. <laughs> I need more money. <laughs> I'm losing money hand over foot, but no, it's not right. like, it's not like this is a new phenomenon or anything like this. And I don't know if you guys ever watched, um, I want to say it was Netflix. They had this Ashley Madison documentary documentary. You remember, I you didn't see that, that one. Yeah. Yeah. So remember they were talking about how they were making up accounts and whatnot to try to attract people. Like it's mm -hmm. uh, kind of along the same lines. Like they were just putting fake accounts out there and people will start to figure it out. Cause they were like, I'm getting like three word answers from this person. You know what I mean? It's just like, how are you? You know what I mean? Hi, I like you. It, it, it was like simple stuff like that. And they started to figure it out that it was, it was pretty much bots. Like the people, the people at the company were just creating fake accounts. And then it was just like, and that's how easily you could figure out if like people, people like not, not to shame people get caught up in, in this fake social media and things of that nature. But if a person with a really attractive photo sends you a message saying, hi, click said photo and they have four friends, they're probably not a real person. All right. It's, it's probably four of your friends because you're all dumb. Here <laughs> I said it. People, people like to, the opposite is people like to argue with things regardless if they're real or not. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of trolls on these forums that are not real people. If you were to click through their profile, you'd be like, hey, the only thing they all they do is troll and they don't have any friends. They could be a real person that could that, that is an MO of a real person or they could be a fake. Um, I don't know. Like. I think with the birth of mass media gen AI and how it's being adopted, there will be parameters and things of that nature to try to stem it and try to have it figure out itself, right? So it can mm -hmm. identify like this signature is me. So this is obviously not a real person. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to just chip people, give them IP addresses. <laughs> <laughs> IPv8. <laughs> you need non-repudiation on everybody and everything on the internet. I know. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We all we all gonna have we're all gonna have CACs now. Everybody. Exactly. Gonna right. Accountability. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be held accountable. Who knows? Something we'll see what happens. And I think for that to happen, there's gonna be something even more grave is gonna happen. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. God forbid. What if they just, instead of getting you a social security card, like it, it was a token, right? Like a common access card. Everybody mm -hmm. gets it at birth. <laughs> People will lose Make sure you hold on to those. Make sure you hold on to them. So much. Yeah. So People don't lose social security cards? I don't think. Yeah. I, don't, oh, I, I still have mine from yeah, when I was born. I was oh, thinking, oh, it's got a card. It's, it's also already got it's your pre-planned identity on Facebook. Right, yeah. exactly. So people people use their, lose their social security cards because they keep them in their wallets. You know what I mean? Yeah. People lose their wallets more that often thing's than made they should. Of, like, that thing's paper. It's made out of toilet paper. Like, why would you keep I, your yeah. social security I card still, on you? There are people I still have mine. It's tattered, but I still have my original social security card. Man. So I don't know, but I digress. So please continue to, to tune in, <laughs> like, share, subscribe, get us to 500 subs, hopefully by the end of the month, 1,000 by the end of the year. Monday, Tuesday, our topics, Wednesday, discussion, Thursdays, ask a CISSP. Fridays, everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. And then we have a weekly uh, newsletter called The Rundown, over 1,400 subs. 
uh, please check that out as well. Uh, yeah, it pretty much covers it. Hit us up on all the, the social medias. Go by our name, the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW. Uh, ask is CISSP. Hit me up at RyRy Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy. Pretty much on every social media platform you can think of, unfortunately. And then you can find Chris and Danny by their full names on LinkedIn, where they've been verified. They're real people. All right. <laughs> stay safe, stay secure. Thank you.